it's time for the Via Hante Stogie Road Show with our special guest, Brian from Pravada Cigar Club. Hola, brothers and sisters of the leaf. What is going on? Good to good to see everybody. I see Chris Haskell. I see Kevin Shahan. I see Kevin Shahan with two comments. I see Chris Haskell with two comments. I see Jim Miller. What's going on? Listen, guys. Uh, glad glad you guys could join us this evening on this Thursday. Sorry if I'm a little congested. Uh, we've had some sicknesses in the house, and it has been quite the. Uh, uh, you know, jucking and jiving, and and I've been uh, I've been avoiding the, the sickness, but uh, we've been getting so much rain here. I'm about build, ready to build an ark, and animals are following me around two by two. So, um, whew, man, it's been a crazy, crazy. Uh, oh, I'm wearing a shirt too. Good job, Chris Haskell. Thank you. What's up, Doctor Gabby Caffey? I got my favorite fiddly on the line, Grace. What's going on, uh, Caitlin Grace? Kate, what's up? What's up, Grace? What's up, Caitlin Mills is on. Uh, listen. Um, I'd sit here and I'd bumble, fumble, rumble, and mumble through the, uh, through the beginning here. But, um, I'm really excited about the, the guest tonight. Um, I'm going to bring him on right now. Let me see here if I can get my technology working great. Um, what's going on, my man? You are, we are live here at Brian Descend. We, he is, hey. uh, he is from Pravada Cigar Club. I'm getting all my bling up, Brian. Hold on for a second here. <laughs> Bang. Look at that. I'm getting my bling bling. Um, there we go. How are you doing tonight, my man? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm excited to be here. Listen, the honor is all mine. Um, uh, we got uh, What's up, stick man? Thanks for hopping on. So, uh, listen, I was really excited when you, uh, when you said, yes, you can make it on the show. So. Uh, one of the coolest things uh, about uh, having a show like this and having uh, folks like you on is learning more about you, uh, your cig- you know why, what got you into cigars, um, and more importantly, we really got to dig deep in this Provada Cigar Club because I was on your website, man. That thing is awesome. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I for people that don't know, Provada Cigar Club is the first rare cigar of the month subscription box. Uh, basically what I do is I go out and I hunt for the rarest possible cigars. Sometimes we create those cigars, but they're all cigars that you cannot find at your local shop. Uh, we're, I'd say in every box, you're going to get something that's possibly dead stock, meaning it was made 10 years ago, five years ago, the company's defunct. They were great cigars, but they had no marketing budget. And right. you know, that's it. the cigars have been sitting in an aging room. Uh, you know, that didn't get paid for to some manufacturer like Dr. Caffey. And, uh, you know, he's like, hey, it's a great story. And I come around and I, I grab them and I really appreciate it. And my people really appreciate, you know, these, these cigars and, and the stories behind them. And um, each cigar comes with uh, pairing notes of what to pair it with and tasting notes and a complete story on the background of where the cigar was made, who made it, why they made it, why it never came out or why, you know, we have it. Um, and um, I think it's also a great educational experience. And I, I actually think it's the reason why we've we've taken off so much is because it is an experience. It's a monthly experience, whether you're a novice yeah. or a master, you're getting these three cigars. I mean, we have CEOs of some of the largest cigar companies in the game that are subscribers. They get the box every month and they love the experience of what's, you know, reading about those stories, getting the notes to look for while they're smoking. Yeah. And then, you know, potentially what to pair it with if you if you uh, so please. Yeah, I got um, I got my first month. I got my uh, first order. I'll tell you what I was. Uh, I, I've only smoked one. Uh huh. OK, I've only smoked one. And it was the Uncle Pauly. Uh-huh. And I'll tell you what. Wow big fan and right before the show we were talking a little bit about um uncle paulie's cigar and i said man i said that was good and you started talking about the notes so talk a little bit of, i i want to i want the the uh, uh the folks to, to to hear a little bit about what we we're talking about with the uncle paulie because it was pretty interesting it was what was going through my mind as you were saying it 
So, okay. So a lot of my members are, oh, we want full, full, full body. And so every once in a while, I do get to slip in a Connecticut shade there if it's absolutely fantastic. Okay. Um, some of the Connecticut shades we've had in the club are, for, I had a five year aged uh, Davidoff uh, Colorado Claro special tea. It's a $25 mm -hmm. cigar. The, the whole, it, it covered the cost of the whole box, but some of these companies love what we're doing and they're willing to share some of their better stuff with us to kind of keep their buzz up. You know, it is also a great promotion. The members of the club are social media fanatics and they're all great people. And, you know, they, they, they help me kind of create this awareness that allows me to get that stuff. So, but back to the question, the question is this Connecticut shade, uh, it's one of my favorite Connecticut shade wrappers. I've given it unbanded to people who smoke mostly Cuban cigars, yeah. who are my favorite smoker, by the way. <laughs> okay, you know, you know these guys. It yeah. has to have two bands. It has to cost thirty dollars a cigar. Yeah. And meanwhile, half the time you can't even get a good draw out of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I give them an Uncle Paulie's when they tell me they, and I tell them it's Cuban, and they go, "Oh, this is this must be from," the, and it's like, "Yeah, okay, you know," but it's it's such. You know, a lot of people say that Connecticut shades get bitter or grassy. And that cigar, I, I feel like it never really, you're always waiting for it to go in a certain direction and it never really goes there. Um, we found the cigar unbanded from Hochi Blanco and uh, we made it for the club. I, I, I tasted it somewhere through a sampling uh, that uh, they sent of, you know, test blends. Yeah. And, um, and they happened to have these laying around. So, I, I grabbed these and um, we fell in love with them. We called them the good morning. Yeah. And so people would go on the site and buy them for, I think there were 10 bucks a pack. <clears throat> and so people would go on the site and buy them for, for, you know, whatever. And they fell in love with them. They were buying them by the dozens. We actually opened up a shop on our website. We were strictly a subscription based thing, but you know, some of the members kept, telling me they wanted us to, you know, try to stock a little more of things so they could buy more if they fall in love with something. So we do that. Um, but it's great. And, You're right, though, about the flavor, man. I was like, I had it with coffee, had it in the morning, and it was just, it, it had some nice transitions. It had that creamy note, a little bit of spice, but I love a cigar like that. That gives me that cedary flavor, especially when you yeah. do the retro. I was like, man, this thing is just a great way to start the day. It hits on it hits on all cylinders. Uh, yeah. And so I got one of the things that I want to do through the club and, and I and I do talk about social media and promotion a lot because that's where Pravada really shines. Uh, and we're creating this community and culture online of cigar smokers who really care about what we're smoking. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm trying to do in cigars what people did in craft beer over the last 20 years. Okay, I, I really want people to not just throw a stick in their mouth, but know where it came from, why it's good, what they like best, the different things, you know, nuances and how to cut things a certain way and how to just in overall enjoy the experience and really respect the farming, the growing, the, 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 the uh, uh, fermenting, the rolling, I mean, the whole deal. So what happened along the way is we've become very popular on social media, like I said, and yeah. some people reached out to us and we ended up working with this Los Angeles based deli called uncle Paulie's. And what uncle Paulie's is, is a bunch of New York guys that are extremely successful in other industries like fashion and film. And they were living in LA because everything's out of LA right mm -hmm. now. So they were like, hey, we got to open something that has food that we like. So they did like a, a newer spin on the Italian deli of New York and New Jersey, that kind of thing. You know, you go in there, you get a hoagie, or, you know, a, a sub hero, whatever you call it, where you're from. Yeah. Right. And exactly. um, the food's to die for. And so I ended up meeting the owner, this guy named John Buscemi. He's got a very popular fashion uh, company. Uh, very expensive clothing, and he's done very well for himself. And he also enjoys a good cigar once in a while. So we talked about doing a cigar for the deli. And I thought it would be a great idea because it's really pushing cigar culture forward. Look, the FDA is out to get us, no matter which way you cut it. And the more people that are aware of cigars, you know, people that don't smoke cigars think that they're these cancer-causing terrible things. And I'm not saying they don't come with any, you know, health side effects, but I don't know about you, 
but I don't know anyone that's getting cancer over here. I know guys that have been smoking for 30 years, and 90% of the time, the people I do know that have gotten sick from things, it's not from the actual cigars. Yeah. So and the FDA does studies, and you know, so obviously it's not that bad for you. It's not cigarettes or vape, right. you know. And so I feel, I truly feel like the more people that become aware of that, even if they don't become cigar smokers, but these fashion and film and people in, in more in the pop culture, you never know when one of these guys is going to end up in the president's, uh, you know, uh, box at the football game and start talking about cigars and how yeah. cool they are, you know. And so, and so that's part of what I'm doing here is creating this awareness. Um, that, that's, that's my big goal with this is to create awareness and to create a craft culture in cigars that, you know, where people really fall in love with this stuff. So anyway, long story short, I make this cigar, the <laughs> Uncle Paul, we put the band on it. The band even has their phone number and address to the yeah. Like, yeah, I thought, I thought that was funny when I saw that. Yeah. You know what? If if that's your goal, you're hit. You're hitting it on the mark because I'll tell you what I I love the bag, and but it's, people it's... got pissed. That's the part I didn't tell you. People got upset that I did that because when oh the band with... or the name yeah well no so we 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 reissued it as the Uncle Pauly yeah it now cost it cost thirteen dollars but if you're a member I'll give you a code for it okay right but it cost thirteen dollars because I have to include them in the profits and that's what they wanted to the, everything they do right. they do yeah. it's expensive stuff so so some of the members got pissed but of course you know they're all happy in the end because i give them the code and everything but they felt like hey what does la have to do with cigars what does a deli have to do with cigars and i understand that but it's also like i said pushing the culture forward so yeah but there's cigar smokers in la and uh you know yeah. there, there's nothing better than a cigar after they eat a good deli sandwich right sure <laughs> i mean come on but I was saying, I mean, you're you're going for that craft culture, and I think you hit the, you know, you hit it out of the park. I love the bag; it's not overly pretentious or anything. It's very straightforward. Um, comes with a Bavita pack in it. Um, and, Bovita did that. It's good for somewhere between nine and twelve months in that bag. Yeah, and uh, a little write up too. I say a little write up. I'll tell you it's what, this is a fountain of information, man. Yeah. Yeah, so each one of those cigars is a story and an experience, and that's yeah. what I try to, you know, get across. Yeah, I was reading through. I was reading through these, and it was, um, you know, you'll get um, these different clubs, and you just get your cigars, or you get a cig. Um, you know, Stogie Bird sends them in a really nice uh, uh, tube. Uh, has some nice information on it as well. Um, what's yeah. up, Paul? Paul, my my dad just hopped on. Um, I do love this. This really gets in depth as tells a story. And, um, you know, one of the things you brought up about, you know, um, you know, fighting a good fight and bringing attention with the cigar industry, you know, with the BCA, the boutique cigar association, we, we, you know, we are fighting that fight as well. And I, 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 Thank I you. this takes, this, this takes me back to the, you know, to the things why I got involved in, in, in the cigar industry and what really drove me and love it. This tells a great story. It, so I, I I love the fact that you really get in depth um, with the blends or with, with each cigar and the blends, the brands, the history behind it, um, because there's a lot of everybody wants to know that, especially if you're going out and you're seek you're seeking um, rare finds or hard to find cigars. Because if I get a packet and I get a cigar and I'm like, oh hey great, uh, Stogie Road cigars, this is really nice, and there's no story behind it, how can you get behind it? How can you understand it? Because that story. Is part of that in a uh, part of the enjoyment of smoking that cigar. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and we've seen this in food and wine and beer now. So why not in cigars? One of the most handcrafted of of all the handcrafted, you know, crafts of all the culinary things. I mean, it's it's really this is an art form, and these guys are artists, and I feel like they've been not disrespected, but. The, the, the work has been commoditized for so long. It's been yeah. cheapened. And, and there's still some great legends out there from Cuba that, you know, went somewhere else and started it all over again. And, and it's just <laughs> awesome. It is. You know, when when um, when when I, I was smoking cigars and I, I started traveling a lot for work. So I started going mm -hmm. to cigar shops. And that's how I started this show, the Viajante Stogie Road Show. And it just kind of developed into something more than just uh, – uh, doing cigar shop reviews, and one of the one of the moments in in for me, and I want to talk to you about your moment. But one of the moments for me that got the hook 
was um, my friend Duncan and I had driven down to Miami. So we drove all night and we arrived and we went to Felix Mesa's place, El Galan. And wow. we sat down and uh, Felix came out and he doesn't speak any English. He's a uh, third generation Cuban uh, a tobacco farmer, has incredible you know, cigars. And he sat there and just gave us cigars. He fed us and he was tel- telling us stories and showing us pictures of his grandfather's farm and wow. everything from the tobacco farms to the, you know, he was showing the pictures of the pigs and it was just wow. so much love and history and just so much behind it. And I thought, God dang, man, this guy is just passionate about this. You know, it just, it's inspiring. So what, what was your hook? What was your hook? My hook isn't as romantic. Um, well, I was with Duncan, so the romanticism was very low. <laughs> my, my, my hook was um, uh, I, I was a musician my whole life, singer-songwriter, until I was about 31. I decided to get out of uh, music at some point. I created a deadline for myself and kind of hit that deadline and was like, okay, I'm done. Uh, went down to Miami, hated Miami. I was also, you know, very used to a very wild lifestyle. Um, and there was too much of it, you know, not, not, you know, any drug in particular or anything, you know, there was no like major addiction or anything, but I, you know, I was a lead singer in, in, in rock groups. Like, you know, you party all the time yeah. and so got down to Miami and it was like, everyone I knew down there was from the music business. And they're like, come on, let's go. We're going to this club. We're going. And I was just like, nah, you know what? This wasn't the right thing for me. And I was in this, uh, it's in a terrible relationship. I got out of the relationship and I went up to Tampa. My uncle was in St. Pete and um, I stayed with him. And then I really fell in love with Tampa and I moved to Tampa and I worked from home. I had just started my own business uh, uh, over you know, the internet and doing telephone sales and stuff. And uh, you know, I'm not going to go to Starbucks. I'm really not a big coffee guy. So oh, I started to- we might, I'm going to end this interview right now. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it doesn't agree with me. I, yeah. I'm a tea guy. My wife is the coffee person. She's like a maniac. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I ended up hanging out at Tampa Humidor. Uh, and there was a guy there, a young guy named Brian, who uh, turned out to be, he used to be a sales rep for Oliva. Um, and uh, he started getting me into uh, the cigars. Now, I was a sneakerhead. I collected sneakers. I, I had a closet full of 60, 70 pairs of sneakers. Everywhere at time I moved, I had to do something with these things. And so I felt wow. like I was already turning like 34, 35, and I was like, this is getting old. <laughs> yeah. And so I kind of took my sneakerhead mentality and turned it towards cigars. So I didn't want to smoke it unless it was a Tatuaje Monster or the Black Series, something that only came out, you know, a rare and uh, whatever the Alec Bradley one is that comes out once a year, all these evergreen uh, 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 limited editions. And so I went crazy for that stuff. And, uh, I turned into a cigar head or we, they call this then cigar nerds, but I yeah. call it cigar head. And, um, and so one thing led to the other and I, and I fell in love with cigars, but you had asked me what my first cigar was. I remember when I was probably 16 or something, uh, I smoked a Macanudo with this guy who was kind of like the Tony Soprano of my town where I grew up in in Allentown. You're from Pennsylvania. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So he was like the big kind of, I don't, I don't know if he's illegal or not, but uh, definitely on the cusp and a big personality. Yeah. And, uh, you, you know, you grow up in Pennsylvania. There's a ton of these kind of guys. He may not be part of the, he may not be connected, but he knows somebody who knows somebody. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Doing his own thing. And, um, and so, uh, you know, it was the 90s. Now, I didn't know it was the cigar boom. I'm 16 years old. What do I know? Mm-hmm. But um, uh, anyway, I could go down memory lane with this. But I smoked it, hated it, what, or didn't hate it. I just didn't, you know, whatever. And then when I got to Tampa Humidor, I didn't so much love the cigars, but I needed a place to hang out a couple days a week. Yeah. I was tired of sitting in the house, so I, I just gravitated towards it. And then about six months in, I bought a box of La Gloria Cubano, the regular line in the Churchill, a uh, natural, and um, and I smoked them all. And by the end of the box, I was a cigar guy, yeah. and I could actually taste some of the different notes. I couldn't get all the stuff I get now, yeah. but I could taste, you know. Yeah, it's it, that that's it, an enlightening moment 
when that happens. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. It's like going to church. Yeah. <laughs> What's it's up, like, man? We got a lot of people like- here. What's up, Amendola? Jeffrey Amendola just hopped on. Dustin Perdome. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. So, um, oh, guys, there was a guy you mentioned, Haskell. I think he might be in the club. Or I know that name. From, we, we definitely have a Haskell. Chris Haskell. Yeah. We got uh, Bones is on. He was asking where you're located. Uh, I think well, somebody answered so, that well, question. Yeah. So uh, um, you were saying that Haskell might be a member. So what do I mean? What what does someone have to do to become a member, and what can they expect? Nothing. I mean, they just go to the website. They fill out a quick questionnaire. It gives me an idea of where their palate is, uh, and then uh, within you know three to five days, they get their first package. And the first package is typically an intro package or the current month's package, whichever you know is I feel is more suitable for the questionnaire they filled out. Yeah. And um and that's it. And they start and typically they get hooked from there and they stay with me, you know. Yeah. So what so you what I cuz I filled it out and it was very interesting the different questions that were being asked. So you take a look at that and then you fit the cigars with that palette. Yeah, I mean to a degree. So in the beginning of the club that quiz was a lot of the deciding factors of what you got. Right. Cigars have become so rare that I can't, unless I can't get enough for the whole club. Like for instance, this month, that package you got, everyone got the same thing. Right. Okay. They were all phenomenal smokes. You had a four or five year aged Padilla from Raices Cubanos. You had a, a beautiful Maduro. I gave that like a 93 when my wife and I smoked it. Uh, you have a um, the Uncle Paul. He's one of the best cigar morning, you know, coffee sticks you can find. And then you have the J.C. Newman made the Good Life for us. And that's a, a very unique decadent. It's like smoking a chocolate cake. So you have a wide array. And, and that'll give me, listen, if you write me an email after that and say, hey, I hated that Good Life. Well, now I know. I'm not yeah. going to send you some in that you know kind of anymore so so that's that's kind of how it goes but then it's like this month i I can't tell you what's in the box i don't want to surprise anyone but there's one uh, there's four cigars that the whole club is getting differently so you'll get one someone else will get a different one and so you guys are going to see each other on social media and go what the hell you know how come i didn't get that and it's just not enough right you know whole club that's pretty interesting now uh, yeah. Benigno asked a question. What's your retention rate? He said it seems pretty high. The retention rate is high. Uh, we've been very, very fortunate with that. Uh, if I had to give you an exact number, I think I lose maybe 15 to 20 percent of the people that join. Out of those 15 to 20 percent, the, the, the ones that respond to me when I ask them if I did anything wrong are telling me it's either money issues, where the guy lost his job, his wife's out of work, you know. Hey, listen, these bills add up, you know, um, or uh, some people uh, uh, do give me negative feedback. And I try to take, you know, uh, respond or uh, learn from that. Yeah. And say, OK, hey, you know what? That's the third person this month that told me they don't like this cigar from this company. Well, I guess maybe we shouldn't work with that company. Anymore. Right. That kind of thing. Or maybe I shouldn't, you know, say this or that, or, you know, whatever it is. So the retention rate is great. And the retention rate is so good because the cigars taste better when they come out of that package. The reason why they taste better when they come, I could give someone, I'm very confident about this, that I could give someone a stick, okay, that sat in someone's humidor, or better yet, in a shop, okay, you could buy that same stick, smoke it with no background information on it, stored the way that that store that brick and mortar stores mm. their cigars with their own air in the in the uh, water in the air humidifying system and that kind of thing versus when you get a cigar from provada you got look you see these coolers do you see those yeah okay so when a cigar comes to me from a factory i put it in the cooler for 30 days with bovra 69 okay after a month, it gets put into the package that you got. Okay? So, like, look, just so you know, I'm not, like, you know, giving you the runaround. I mean, this is what's here. You know? I mean, this is – it's it's craziness in here. We're outgrowing our space very quickly. Wow. Um, but then it sits in here 
for 30 days before I ship it. So by the time the cigar got to you, it has only been humidified with Boveda for 60, probably somewhere between 65 and 75 or 80 days before you get it. I'm telling you, it makes the cigar better. The small, I tell people this all the time, the smaller the compartment with the Boveda, the better, because it's more, it's more uh, manageable. It's easier to regulate. And so it, it becomes a more even thing. And then to top it off, you then open it, you read about it. So now you have a story. Mm-hmm. The cigar starts to feel more special and it becomes an experience. And that's the secret to my sauce. And you know what? A, a ton of people tell me, oh, you shouldn't say that. People are going to copy. You want to copy, copy. You know, I don't know. It yeah. is what it is. Like I said, I'm here for one reason, and that's to push cigar culture. I love cigars. And I think that it really should be looked at a lot more culinary than it is now. Yeah. No, I mean, if, if you want to, if you don't want to be copied, then you got to be quiet and you'll, you'll stay small and, and then won't become successful. Steve Bernstein said that you're uh, one of the few online cigar spots where you can actually smoke the cigar right away. Cause you know, when, yes. when, when you get the, cause I, I do, I mean, every time I get cigars, I always throw my humidor and, you know, kind of let them get some time to acclimate and so, so on. But uh, yeah. you know, the process that you're going through, it's uh, I plug and play. You to, I prefer people ask me about this all the time. And I say, listen, I prefer you to keep it in the bag. A lot of guys have trouble doing that because they have their, that's their art in the process. You know, they store it out a certain way and that's really cool too. So, but yeah, they do come ready to smoke. That's awesome. So how long have you been doing this? It's, uh, April is wait, are we going on three years or two years? April 17th, so 19, we're not at close to April. Well, we're getting close to April, so about two years, 24 months. Now, see, uh, that's nice. So, Hammond had a question for you because uh, this is funny and, and learned something new, is that you're a cigar hunter. Um, obviously, you know, you're trying to find the rare cigars. And that's, when I, when I was doing my traveling, I started getting into looking for the rare stuff the stuff that no one could find. And some of the things that I would find in some of the tobacco shops, it was amazing. So uh, what's your white whale cigar is the question. Yeah. So, I mean, for my personal collection, um, I found a can of uh, Tatuaje black from, I think it was the first year it was released or something. It was like a 13 or a 12 or something like that. And it's, I mean, you know, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, The, um, for the club, there's been so many of them because, you know, the word gets out that I'm doing this and it also gets out that, Hey, you know, the, the, the brands that are in the club, because the guys are so social media savvy, you know, you you really creates awareness about the brand. And so with that, I get calls now. I don't have to hunt as hard because now I get calls. But when I first started, I worked with a uh, humidor, uh, a B&M in Kansas, in Wichita, uh, called uh, uh, Westside Humidor. Mm -hmm. And they were a player who had their own brand of cigars, which someone just bought from them recently. It was called uh, Dissident. Okay. And they also were a brand, were a, a store that had a lot of, uh, cigars made for them. In fact, if you if you don't mind, if I go off camera for a second, well, you know what? Go rogue. Okay, hold on one sec. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, so, for all you who are joining us, we're here with Brian Descend of Pravada Cigar Club. Uh, got the website up top. Check it out. Wait, yeah, right there. Check out the website. A um, uh, couple questions you got to answer. Uh, pretty much diving into your palate, what you like, uh, what you prefer. And, uh, you get yourself a nice packet. And I gotta tell you, I got mine. I started smoking. I smoked the uncle Paul the other day. It was outstanding. Thanks Dukey. Good to see you brother. Uh, so we're back. We're back live with Brian. What's yeah. Up, Brian? yeah you know, I'm not going to go digging through it's, it's craziness in here right now. Um, I don't want to I don't want to see anything topple in the background. And right, get buried. Right. That's <laughs> happening. So, uh, especially when I'm in here alone, no one will find me until tomorrow. <laughs> Um, the, okay. So the, my recent purchase from them was a shipment of, I got like a thousand of them. Uh, they're, um, room one Oh one 
called the Ichiban. You remember that? The one that was wrapped in a white paper with the Japanese yeah. colors? And Veil, had yeah. Ichiban. Okay, he made that in a big Salamone for West Side Humidor, and I bought the, the rest of their stuff out because they just, this cigar, it, it's on the website. You can buy it single. You don't have to be a member to buy it. Um, this cigar is such an amazing experience. It reminds me of like smoking tea or something. Like there's just so many nuanced flavors that um, it's just incredible. And if you want to try the experience without joining the club, you buy something on the shop and read the tasting notes right on the shop and you'll get the experience. You get a better price when you buy it as a, you know, in the, in the subscription. Cause I, I, I got predictability, <laughs> in thing, you know, yeah that's, that's my ease is my life. That's great. You know, um, one of my f favorite finds, I grabbed it off the uh, desk at uh, the top there just because I was in North Carolina and I was, I, I went in this little strip mall in the middle of nowhere, went in this tobacco shop. If you go to those tobacco shops and you get, they have a small humidor, you can find some crazy stuff. So I walk in there and he has the old pre Davidoff Camachos all over the place, right? Ooh. Listen, though, all of them tobacco beetles. I kid Ooh. you not. So I'm like, son of a bitch. So I look up and I see boxes wrapped in plastic. So I pulled it down, blew the dust off of it. Went over, I said, how much for these? He's like, uh, they're 90-some dollars. I'm like, I'm not giving you 90-some dollars. I'll give you 80. He's like, go away. I said, listen, it's been sitting up there forever. It's got dust on it. I'll give you 80. He goes, okay. Came back the next day, bought the other box for 80, and it happened to be the Camacho, the first, the release of the, the Diploma. Oh, wow. Two That's boxes. So and, you know, this is this is kind of my... Uh, the uh the whole the holy grail for me with 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 because I, sure. I, I found some really cool you know rare old stuff along the way um but this one really was just outstanding because the corojo and the band inside is just i don't know if you can see that it's so, all i mean it was it was aged you opened up there's 18 there's 18 there's 18 in here um what? You, you, I, people don't like that's one of the things that i would tell you if i'm giving you a cle or or a camacho from you know the, back in those days they tell you that that corojo is the original corojo that's before cuba had to had to hybrid the seeds because of mold you know this is the original cuban seed tobacco it's very special i have two more left in my humidor i had two boxes um they last me for a couple of years when i got them they were wrapped i mean the the, the paper they were wrapped in was just completely yellow and, and, and brown um but i bought them from the shop because they were still wrapped in cellophane so they still were safe you know i did you know put them in the freeze for a little bit but um i gotta tell you what's up antoine uh good to see you that was my that was my white whale that was mine so um Anything you hey, you want to see a white whale? I do have yeah. available. Let me let me show you. Hamad, your question is on deck next. As soon as we get Brian back, we're looking at the Tower of Power. Looks like a little bit of uh, cedar shelf Stonehenge. Okay, this is called Echicera, which has something to do with witchcraft. This is one of the most beautiful boxes I've I've ever seen. You know, you don't have to pull out Velvet first, Jesus if you're talking about witchcraft. When you first look at it, you don't really think much of it, but when it sits on the table, you start to look at it more and more and go, "Wow, that's a beautiful box." Yeah. So these were made in 2013 uh, by a woman who partnered with um, Christian Iroa. Speaking of Camacho, really. And, um, She's, uh, you know, into, I guess, spirituality, right. um, uh, maybe sorcery or something. You know, I don't want to speak on things I don't know about, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, so she made these beautiful female empowered cigars, you know, wow, very power of female and, you know, really cool stuff. And, um, these are smoking like champs wow. and I, I I'm trying to. He's checking his factory to see if he is enough for me to put them in the club. That'd be awesome. He, he still has enough yet, but I, I'm working. Either way, it'll go in the shop. But I really want enough for the club, and 
it's uh, it's a really unique find. So, so make sh- make sure it makes make, make sure any of those bags that Greenville, South Carolina finds us. <laughs> I will. I will. I will. So Hamad wanted to know. Um, he said Brian. Hamad. He said, did the club help any companies to uh, to rise? Have you is have that, you helped anybody is, get on the scene? Is that Hamad from uh, from UAE or UK? It's got to be him. Hamad Rashad. Uh, I don't know. Okay, so um, have we helped? Yeah, I think we've helped a ton of brands. In fact, we now have brands, bigger brands, coming to us to do, you know, sort of consulting. Uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but, you know, we, we make a project for the club. They promote it. We promote it. And some of them are going to start putting them in stores now once once we're done and, you know, kind of using the club to promote new releases and stuff like that. So. You're going to get stuff first before anyone else has it, that kind of thing. I think Karen says she has that cigar in her shop. It's Karen Berger. Berger says Karen amazing. does? She says, Karen's I have in my on- store amazing cigars. Is Karen's on here right now? Yeah. Oh, Karen, hello. Hey, those samples you gave me, oh, my God, those are great. We're going to make a, we're going to make a big splash with those. Nice. Thank you. Karen, I mean, there you go. How about that? There's someone who, uh, I, you know, I hope – no one you know not not to take offense to but you know i mean who's talking about karen Berger? she's vertically integrated 100 percent owns the farm yeah owns the factory sells them direct yep. i mean she's got it going on great you tell me a brand that can make you an esteli puro from the ground up yep i mean these are the unsung heroes of this industry and and i'm trying to change that you know, we told people about Karen Berger. They fell in love with Karen Berger. Now more people are talking about her. So there's a brand that I think we helped a little bit. I hope I'm not overstepping when I say that. But And we're going to continue to uh, to uh, uh, push the reputation because she makes a great product. Yeah, Karen's stuff's that? really good. She makes really good stuff. Uh, I was talking about Felix Mesa. His is, you know, from Nicaragua too. Same thing, seed to shelf. Um, great people just to... I and Gabby Caffey, we talk about the hooks. That was a second hook is meeting Gabby, talking to him, and not only um, having conversations with him about his passion for cigars, but his business sense. I mean, yeah. just a really a brilliant guy. And well, when the you get, doctor, yeah, when you get involved <laughs> with guys like that, man, you're like, God dang, he's obviously he's obviously no dummy. And yeah. I mean, there's another guy who, who you know, he's over here making cigars that people were talking about, but you know. And I know some places mention them and stuff, but not like they should, you know? Right. I'll tell you, I've, we're going to change that. That okay. was one of the things that when um, when um, I, I, we talked about it briefly, or back and forth, when I started uh, thinking about coming out with a cigar when I was doing my traveling, um, when Gabby and I start talking, we start getting into conversations, I realized this is a guy who I want to partner with. He is... He is not only a great business guy, he's not only a um, very knowledgeable in the cigar industry, but he's a genuinely good person, a good human being. And that matters most because I could deal with a lot of um, um, a lot of shortcomings in, 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 in folks professionally. But if you sure. get someone who's a good human being, that means the world. And he worked with me and, uh, you know, uh, I, 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 I think it was in March of last year. Um, worked with him and the blenders to get the blend going. I mean, it wasn't like, Hey, we're just going to put this cigar together for you and put a band on it. You know, good to go. He really, uh, walked me through the process and I learned so much just, just in those short months early on. And I continue to learn from taking an idea and a thought and actually bringing it to life and being able to say, wow, I have this. How cool is that? This, oh, it's it's great. And you know, um, in November, I told him I said I want to take a, a big step and I want to come out with a Lancero, a barber pole Lancero. And he's like, "We can do it. We can do it." We put it in the club. So you know, what was really cool about this though. And I tell the story because he comes back to me, and goes, "Hey, you know how uh, Lanceros he got a tight draw?" And a re- I go, "Yeah." He's like, "Yeah, we were having some issues, but we have someone who has a way of." Um, uh, manipulating the, the the binder and the filler, he goes. I think we hit a home run, and I'll tell you what, it's amazing the draw on this. I mean, I'm biased, of course. I'm not gonna lie, but um, 
draw, though. You know if it's good or well, not. Well, I'm biased, but of course, when you invest in it, right? And that, you know, when you get your samples, you're like, all right, cool, this is great, you know? And then when you get the first shipment, you're like, oh, shit, man, that's a lot of boxes. This better be fucking good. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, <laughs> and then when the Lancero came, I'm like, oh, sweet Jesus, this better be good. And it, I, I, I liken it to, to like politics because I always figure if I vote for someone, I'm going to be their biggest critic because they they earn my vote. So if I have someone making my cigar and I get it, I'm going to be the biggest critic. I'm just not going to say it's great because it's my cigar. And I'll tell you, it was I couldn't be any happier. He is a great Good. guy. And he's got great cigars. I'll tell you what, man. His San Andreas, his San Andreas is, has always it's been my top cigar for the last couple of years. Fantastic. He, 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 he's, he's done amazing stuff for the club. The club loves him. We're going to keep running with him. I, I really dig him and, and his style and the people he works with. He's turned me on to some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Like the Kuwait cigar we have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a great cigar. But he, he's a great guy, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to yeah. work no. with him, you know? At 100%. You know, there's folks not, that are just jerks or it's kind of hard to deal, deal with. What's that? There's not too many people in this industry you want to do. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm saying that there's a lot of people out there like, yeah, they make great cigar, they're talented, but they're kind of an asshole, they're jerks. But sure. um, I, 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 the guy literally is just one of the most genuinely nicest guys I met. Felix Mesa was the same way. I met Mike Bellotti. What an incredible guy. Um, Oscar Rodriguez. Um, you know, just when you meet these guys, you're like, wow, you know, some great people. Um, yeah. I've never had the pleasure of meeting Karen personally. Um, but you know, we've exchanged pleasantries and I've smoked her cigar and I've been to her shop and I'll tell you, um, great stuff. Yeah. yeah great stuff sure. coming out of that factory, man. Really good. For stuff. Sure. So what's the future of, uh, of Pravada? Well, we're filming a TV show or, or a show, um, we're uh we're cutting our teeth with it uh i'm trying to i i, I guess i would portray it as so <laughs> gabby we, says we, i'm not an asshole <laughs> but, <laughs> um it's a it's a a show based on our website spirited smoke so when facebook and instagram started throwing people off because of tobacco we yeah. started this web called spirited smoke.com you go there it looks just like facebook and you can, you know, chat and communicate with your friends and no one's going to bother you. Bearded over smoke dot com. Yeah. OK. And so so we decided to turn it into a, uh, a, a, a show. And basically what we do is uh, each episode we have a theme. The first episode is the olfactory senses and retro hailing. So really teaching people that you're not actually tasting it. You're smelling it, so to speak. And so we're going out to we go out to one uh, every episode, we go out to one either uh, humidor, uh, uh, farm, uh, factory for cigars, and we find a unicorn of a cigar, <laughs> and we talk to the masters there about you know whatever you know what's in, relevant to that topic. Right. And then we go to a distillery uh, once an episode, and we talk to professionals in the spirits, how to taste spirits better, how to pair things, stuff like that. And we also grab a bottle of their most special rare stuff. And at the end of every episode, we come back here, we smoke and drink and get hammered on, on, uh, yeah. Yeah. On <laughs> <laughs> so, so, oh, that's cool, man. So, uh, yeah. are, are you going to be doing any music, any singing? No, none, none that, that far behind that ship has sailed. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? You mentioned creating something and, and, and how exciting that was. And I got to tell you as an entrepreneur, I, I've had one, uh, common edge over my, uh, oh, I don't know, over, there's no competition. I, I'm just saying there's, I've had this one recurring success factor, which is I was used to going into a studio, taking a track, writing a song to it and recording it right there on the spot. Right. You know, I think that that's a practice that so many people should have. Everyone should have this practice because when you create something all the time and it you, then you turn it into business, you go, oh, I got this idea. Well, guess what? We'll do it. And it's done. Now here's the business. Now let's go market it. Now let's do, you know, whereas a lot of people that never created, they go, yeah, I'll think about it. And, you know, one day and, you know, that kind of thing. And, and so it's yeah. intimidating or unfamiliar. So they don't actually follow through with it. So that's been something that's, uh, been a very successful thing for me and i love 
creating bands and cigars now. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Well, you know what it is too is um, when you say that because you know you you got a lot of the we my dad calls them the uh, the 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 bar stool you know coulda shoulda woulda been, um, and as you said you have that edge. It's it, it not with the competition maybe it just sets you apart or or, or allows you to continue to be successful, and. <clears throat> I've noticed not only the people who say, well, maybe I have this great idea or people have an idea and I'm going to give it a try, but they never put it on paper. They don't have a plan is I think that you're, you're not afraid to fail. And hundred percent. And, and cause, cause you know, or make a mistake because you can make a mistake. You can fail and learn from it and be better. Or, and, and I think that whole, th there's kind of the, the duality of that statement is you're not afraid to fail or that you just won't allow yourself to fail. And I think those kind of are always jockeying for position. <laughs> so, so my my first box in the club is nothing compared to the the box of today. Okay, the first show that we do of Spirited Smoke is going to be probably terrible. The second one will be better. The third one will be by the tenth episode, you worked out the kinks, and yeah. hopefully never falling right. Yeah. So, I mean, and then the other thing is, how about this? You learn more from your fails than you do from your wins. Oh, 100%, so man. As often as you can. 100%. 100%. I mean, it's, it, I look at, you know, even when I started first doing the show, it was like, it's, I look, I liken it to a business plan. It's a living document. It's always changing. You know, sure. uh, Joel wants to know when the first episode is going to be available. So we just started editing it tonight before we, we did this. Um, and uh, it looks to me like it's probably going to take two weeks to edit this first one, uh, maybe three. And then we're just going to put it out. Even though I don't have another episode behind it, yeah. I know that it get easier and easier to make. I'm going to think that the, the timeline between episodes is going to be about 45 days, 30 to 45 days to make. And it also cost me like $2,500 to three grand to do it. So I'm coming up with that out of my pocket because I just think the culture needs it. We're going to take cigars off the porch and i think cigars have been on the porch on youtube and on television a guy smokes he tells you what he's taking you know there's no yeah. movement we're gonna take it out to the streets and i think that this is something that's very necessary if we're gonna push this culture forward no i agree 100 percent with you so expect it in two to four weeks two to four weeks now ryan tucker's got a question for you he wants to know um if you're gonna make a cigar version of your song label girl no, <laughs> I think I think tell him I think we did already the good life. The good life. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask I mean, you about that when I got it right here in my in my uh, yeah. my, my, oh, my show custom made Wayabeda by uh, Y A Bear Clothing. Um, nice, I like. It. Yeah, this is uh, the guy is uh, Joe Genovese down in down in Florida. It's Y A Bear Clothing. Gen Pardon. Genovese. Yeah, yeah, Genovese. He's uh, but you know he does custom custom uh, uh, Wayabedas. So Very cool. I got to give Jennifer a shout out. My fiance, she designed this one. Oh, nice. Um, and, uh, you know, you send it in and he's a great guy, man. Great guy. Great product. Um, so this cool. is here. Let me, let me do this real quick. So we don't get, so you got to let that, uh, I, I tell people before they smoke that it's still pretty, I, I probably should have held it a little bit longer. That wrapper is so thick. It's just retaining a ton of moisture. I, I like to let mine sit. If I know I'm going to smoke it that night, I put it out during the day. I no humidity whatsoever. Yeah, but they're I smoking, can feel it. Yeah, they're smoking incredibly. So that band is the Beverly Hills Hotel. So if you've ever seen the Beverly Hills Hotel, that's their font. The, the, nice and uh, dark, man. The, the, um, uh, the wrapper around it is the, uh, or the, the, the green part around it is the, palm leaves they use for their wallpaper and then the stripes are the awning i screwed up on the stripes though i don't know how i approved the proof they were supposed to be green just like the awnings there but they came out black so whatever it's all good so tell us about the blend because i'll tell you what this i can feel the the moisture you just you, that you that you described but man that uh that is dark and oily and looks delicious so i made that with eric newman um uh thankful that he, he decided to work with me um we made it uh i wanted something in a san andreas and i think he kind of steered me into a broad leaf uh that he had uh in, in around 
And uh, we went through a couple of samples with some of his blenders. And uh, I finally got that one. And if you know the club, you know that I, I like a smaller ring gauge. And uh, like we do a lot of Lanceros and stuff like that. And um, <laughs> I got that in that exact size. And I was like, that's it. Don't change it. And they're like, don't you want, you know, your standard, you know, millennial bullshit. That's, that's how I think some of the <laughs> older guys look at me, right? <laughs> millennial <laughs> bullshit. Don't you want that's your funny. Lancero or your fucking Corona or one of these? And so, um, and so no, I said, no, don't touch this blend. This is, oh man, my battery's dying. Uh, I said, I said, no, don't touch this blend. I want it exactly like this. And so the club members, they got it. They're like, wow, this is surprisingly a large ring gauge for you. It's probably a 50, it's a 54. And I'm telling you, you've never smoked a cigar quite like that. It is so unique. It's like smoking a chocolate cake. Really? It's just so decadent and different. I'm not saying it's the best thing you'll ever have. I'm just saying you haven't had one exactly like right. that. Very unique. Reminds me a little of Sokka's, uh, uh, broad leaf how gunky that thing is yeah you know i'll have to let it sit out i'll smoke that tomorrow night nice friday after a big meal yeah oh yeah yeah yeah. so so you're saying lancero is 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 a millennial so so basically we've, we've come full circle now <laughs> no i'm not saying that right? i'm just saying i'm saying that like i feel like lancero's always been looked at as like this cigar nerd thing the big the guy the big companies don't like him because they don't really sell a lot yeah you have to like a niche product you know i can tell you i'm releasing mine um i thought it would be a niche product and it kind of is but i've gotten some really good response from it and i think they're coming back i mean <laughs> listen um you know i you know for me i'm like i i gab and i were talking about this i said i'm gonna be the barber pole king i mean uh <laughs> Next next month, I'm going to be releasing a barber pole that is a Candela, Connecticut barber pole. I don't Ooh. know any out there. Things freaking delicious. I'll tell you, those folks, the, the, the guys down at Tobacco Larry Cafe, holy balls. Um, yeah. We worked on the blend, and they hit it on. I mean, they hit the – it's awesome. The sweet – I'm calling it the sweet grass gringo. Love it. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. You, you said – Mention that to me. I got to try all your stuff. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll send you know. some stuff. I'll send you some stuff. But... Okay, and you know, and, and I'll, I'll also. I got your address now. So. Yeah, yeah, but I'll tell you, I I've always been a big fan of Lanceros, and like you said, it's something that you know, it's not you know, one of those things. That, it's in pockets. You know, if my traveling, I'm like, okay, I stop in here, six by sixty, stop in here, blah blah blah. Then I'll stop in a shop of like Quartermasters in Maryland. Boom, Lanceros. I go to Ned Cigar Shop in in Newtown, Pennsylvania. Lancero, crazy Lanceros. Um, New Newtown's down uh, near Philly, not quite near Philly. North near of Philly. Philly. Yeah, it's that's north. where they filmed, they filmed that movie with Christopher Walken and Sean Penn. You remember that movie about the the farmland farm farm boys or whatever it was? Oh, farm... with oh, is that the one with uh, Madonna? No, but it was around that at time. close range. At, Christopher yes. Walken it was that close yeah. range. It had Madonna. I mean, I don't know. I don't yeah. remember. <laughs> I remember you know, yeah. being there with Chris Penn. He was skinny then. He wasn't fat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> um, yeah, man. I, I love that movie. And I always, I always, I, when I like a movie, I always find out where it was filmed and it was filmed there. There's a guy up there who's got a cigar uh, company, Flatbed. Flatbed cigar is really good stuff. Really Man, I gotta. We we gotta have a lot more of these conversations because you're giving me leads. Now I get to go, go on my hunt. I love that. Listen, I I, I want some commission. I will work for cigars. All right, <laughs> I, I'm with you. Man, my phone. I'm. I charged up for this. I don't understand. I guess maybe Skype's draining my battery, and I'm in the warehouse. I don't That's have my. Well, listen, man, uh, do you, uh, you know, I know your battery's dying. I appreciate we can probably sit here for another hour and chat. But, I know. <laughs> um, we, we had a lot of folks on. Um, I want to, first of all, thanks, thank thank you to everybody who's hopping on. Um, thank yeah. you for the great questions. Um, I always want to thank Joe Genovese from YA Barra. Um, love him. He's great. I want to thank Gabby Caffey, a Caffey yeah. 1901 brands, um, you know, uh, and, and the folks at Tobacco Lara Caffey. And also uh, the folks, at the, uh, us at the Boutique Cigar Association. We started a podcast. We just started our first uh, a broadcast uh, a podcast uh, called Protecting Legacy. And uh, you know we, we discuss um, every, we discuss other things other than cigars, but 
we really are going to be uh, focused more on um, uh, talking to brick and mortar owners, um, uh, discussing the, the successes, the failures, because owning a brick and mortar is tough. man. It's tough. You know, and and it's like, you know, some of these folks, it's, uh, you know, what's the key to success? And and really, uh, you talk to some of these guys and, and it always seems like the the, the the travel and the key to success is simple. It's not easy, you know. So, uh, you know, simplicity never necessitates ease. It's very hard. It's the simplest things in life are very hard. They're just simple to do. With 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 rent, the way it is now, with commercial real estate, the way it is now, in in my opinion, inflated. But if you can fill it, then it's not inflated. Like if you can. Find someone to pay what you're asking for. Now, near me in Orlando, they think that this is Los Angeles. And a lot of guys are sitting on empty commercial space that they're trying. They're just, they're obviously, you know, it's part of a portfolio and they don't care how long they sit on it. They want what they want for it. Um, but it's, it's, it's ridiculous. So between the rate, the rising cost of real estate, uh, commercial real estate and the tax on tobacco and the, uh, the 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 just scrutiny of tobacco. Yeah, it's becoming harder and harder. <laughs> they're getting hammered down. I mean, you see in, in Maryland, they're they're pushing for a law to, to uh, do away with the flavored tobaccos, uh, menthol cigarettes. Where you know menthol cigarettes should have been addressed a long time ago in the original bill, but it wasn't because uh, you know that's there's a reason why they call it the Marlboro Man Act. Um, <laughs> and when everybody started realizing who was who was uh, lining the pockets of the uh, you know of, of, the, of the lawmakers and the politicians, they backed off a little bit and allowed those uh, uh, menthol cigarettes to, to to kind of uh, hang out there. But uh, there's... how we got how we got lumped into all this is complete bullshit, and someone needs to get in the president's ear. Or uh, and 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 and. Uh, I mean, you know who's doing a hell of a jo- a hell of a. I, I mean, between the cigar rights of America, which I joined thanks to Gabby, uh, and uh, but uh, the Newman family. Yeah. When I go out there, they've got some politician in their place at all times. They're really pushing hard. They got them. They got them to agree to uh, twelve dollars being premium now, right? So that's a start. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They also got them to not put the stupid sticker on the boxes yeah so i mean we're doing we're doing okay but there's a there's a long road ahead of us we we, someone's got to just exempt us from this this is not for kids no kids buying this we said it before man the president 100 percent. you know i i I feel like there's going to be a political shift and move because you give the cigar uh industry an exemption as the president you want to secure those electoral votes in Florida and Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, you know, and you know, um, you strengthen your base hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. You know, the problem, the problem, uh, that not to get political, but the problem that Trump has is his brother died of, of lung cancer from cigarettes. Um, you know, he was a big drinker and a smoker and he died very young and that's why Trump doesn't drink or smoke. And um, and so for him, he has no love for tobacco of any kind. If he hears tobacco, he's going the other way. So it's it's an issue. It's an issue. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, this is because of the liberals. Well, not really. I mean, you know, sure, Democratic states do tax a lot more. I, I get that. But I think this bill was uh, the, the bill that really hurt us was was uh, introduced Republican. It was passed in a Republican, uh, what, Senate or Congress and uh, and a Republican president signed off on it. So you can't blame any one party for this. You just have to create awareness and talk to your local government about why it's important that ultra premium cigars are not lumped in with cigarettes or vape. It's something totally different. Yeah, we got in that conversation about the uh, TPE and the pictures and the the cigar side and then there's the the vaping and the the uh, cbd and everything else and um DB. kind of what the uh, impression that that gives you know at that at that event and um we we really kind of we really did dive into that pretty deep uh, on our podcast because 
I'm not thrilled about the CBD. First of all, none of my guys smoke infused stuff. We don't want infused stuff. We want the most natural product we could possibly get our hands on. Uh, number two, I believe that uh, America is being duped with this CBD because the real CBD isn't legal in most states. And so you're buying this CBD oil that really doesn't do what CBD does. You go to California and you buy CBD gummies and you eat them. You feel something. You go, like in Florida here, you get the CBD and you try it. I guarantee you're not going to feel it. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, you know, being in the medical industry for, for 20 plus years, um, I, I hate, you know, I, I, I do understand that there is some medicinal um, uh, benefits to to CBD and um, and even with marijuana. I, I completely understand and respect that. Sure. Um, the only thing I've always said is, you know, um, I like to see clinical trials and testing because I hate seeing people go off of medication that um, they claim is, um, you know, well, this is synthetic. It's it's made understanding it's expensive. And then they go on this stuff, you know, and, and I liken it to snake oil. You know, it's like the guys back in the day with their uh, horse and buggy. And um, you see people getting sicker. And, you know, I just want to see I want to see a true benefit in a specific disease state before you start painting with a broad stroke and saying that CBD cures uh, cancer, uh, glaucoma, um, you know, uh, um, you know, um, it, I got uh, GI issues. I have this. I have that. Um, let's, let's put some, you know, put some money behind it. If you, if, if you think that, um, you know, run it, run it, run a clinical trial, run it against Listen, placebo. See what happens. CBD, I do think CBD has some medicinal purposes for digestion and for anxiety and things like that. It, it can be calming. Oh boy. Uh, it can be calming, but, um, you know, I'm just saying it, I don't, like it and i don't want it in my cigar <laughs> right no i'm with you listen i've always said that uh, vape shops uh, should be separate they shouldn't be allowed to sell cigars or tobacco and i think tobacco shops like cigar shops should not be selling vape any cigarettes absolutely i'm i'm down to five percent so. all right man listen i want to thank I, you for uh, for hopping on anybody who wants to try out this great uh, cigar club i joined i belong provide a cigar club uh, the website's up top. I'll make sure that I post it on the Care Viajante page. And um, I want to return the favor and I want to start promoting more of what you're doing because you're good for cigars. And I appreciate you. And I appreciate you having me on. And shout out to Dr. Gabby Caffey. Yes, for sir. And um, man, let's do this again in a couple of months. I got something new that I think I'm going to get a little groundswell with. And uh, I want to include you in that. I'm looking forward to it. I appreciate it. And we'll connect and uh, I'll send you some samples. I'll send you a few. I'll send you a care package. I did. I will. We'll uh, we'll exchange a mail bomb as they, as the the kids call it, as the kids call it. (laughs) Just damn millennials. All right, Brian, listen from Brian from Provada Cigar Club and uh, El Viajante here from Viajante Stogie Road. Everybody have a great evening and a great week and, and God bless. Thank you.